problem. Um, so the first thing to, that they that the investor needs to do is figure out what a reasonable uh, uh, period holding period for the investment is, and by convention, five is is probably the most five years is probably the most common. Although there's nothing sacred about five years, it can be six or seven or nine or twenty, it could be two or three. Um, but most models start with something in the five year range, and I will do the same thing here. As we saw in the case, um, Fred knows that the way Samantha looks at this, and Samantha is a sophisticated investor, is she'll look at net income in the fifth year, in the terminal year, and she'll multiply it by a PE multiple. Now there are many ways to do this. You could take EBIT and multiply it by an EBIT multiple. And in fact, most private equity investors would prefer to do that, but that's not the way Samantha is looking at it. And Fred is looking, is trying to build a model to explain the value of his business to Samantha. Now the business has been has generated uh, a, a fair amount of cash, some cash I should say, uh, over time. In fact, if you look at the cash account here. Uh, we already examined the fact that at the end of the first year it's got 600000 of cash, but you can see cash builds up slowly, although not incredibly quickly because uh, according to this forecast, you can see earnings look pretty good. Uh, well, I'm sorry, net income looks pretty good. Uh, cash from operations looks pretty good, uh, but um, capital expenditures are fairly significant and what really uh, choose up cash is that the business is growing very fast and to finance those sales uh, the principal uh, cash uh, consumer is the accounts receivable which have to grow to a significant level in order to support the business. That requires a significant amount of investment in working capital which in turn means that the annual investment in working capital which is the which is in effect the increase in the working capital amounts every year uh, requires a lot of cash. And when you take that into account, uh, not that much cash is added to the top line. But some is, and when, the, when a business is sold, there's always a negotiation over excess cash on the balance sheet. And so let's just account for that here by taking a look at whatever the cash account is in that final year. In this case, it's $1.4 million dollars and then subtracting out a reasonable amount of cash needed to run the business, which um, is an input assumption. It can be changed later, but um, we're going to assume for the moment that that's $1 million. So there's a certain amount of excess cash on the balance sheet, which either the company will dividend out to its shareholders, or uh, in a more tax-efficient transaction, the buyer will pay them that much more for the cash and keep the cash uh, to run the business. Uh, the reason that that's more preferable is that uh, in under American tax law, uh, that transaction would treat the cash as a uh, capital gain rather than as an uh, an income uh, ordinary income item uh, if it were dividended out. Uh, so the value of the company to its shareholders is then the sum of its going concern value, of uh, which is determined on the basis of a multiple in the fifth year plus excess cash, uh, and then uh, management options uh, represents how much of the business the, company, the management owns. Uh, now this is going to be a, a subtraction, so I'm putting in, I'm starting uh, this equation with a negative number, and I'm just going to take it for the moment here from our cap table, which has already been shown, and we'll go through the calculation of this in, in detail. But we know that management, uh, before the seed investors have come, come on board, have 15% uh, of the company, or, or 150,000 uh, of, or out of a million shares, and uh, multiply that by the value of the company. And uh, before the seed owners get their share of the business, management might get $16.4 million. This number is going to drop because we haven't yet included the logic for uh, the seed equity investors' ownership in the business will uh, do that in a moment, and these numbers should adjust automatically if all goes well. The value of the company, then, after management options, is simply the sum of the value of the company and the negative value of the management options. 
So $92.9 million is the value of the business left uh, to uh, both the founders and the investors. Now to figure out how much the seed equity requires, and this is covered in the case, we're going to use the venture capital method, uh, which determines, uh, which estimates what the company, what, what the seed investors need in order to get a certain rate of return um, on their investment. And that calculation is simply the a variation of the present value calculation with the assumptions all given. So that is going to be, actually, I'm going to make this a negative number as well. And that is going to be the amount of the investment in the seed round, which is $5 million in this case, times 1 plus the required rate of return, which is 50% uh, in this case, raised to, in this, now we know it's the fifth year, and so I'm going to hardwire this as the fifth year. Actually, I'm going to make this, I'm going to softwire it to whatever our exit year happens to be, uh, assuming that the seed equity round all happens in year zero. So what this says is that for an investment of $5 million, the seed investors, um, if they want to get a 50% rate of return on their money, are going to have to realize a return of 38% of the business. Now down here you can see in the cap table that that's already been translated into a number of shares and you may wonder uh, correctly where did that calculation come from and we will go through it in a minute. Uh, so the value of the company to its founders then is simply value of the company after management options less the seed equity proceeds. Now I'm going to make it a larger um, area here and include some other rows for reasons that will become evident later. And what this tells us is that um, that Fred, in sitting down to negotiate with Samantha, can say, Samantha, I, if you'll give me $5 million, I will return uh, $38 million, which will represent uh, a certain share of the business. And uh, that will, and he will, he can negotiate that knowing full well that uh, his uh, share of the proceeds after Samantha gets her money is going to be over $60 million. Uh, that's a very good thing. Now I'm just going to skip ahead to, um, to the capital table, uh, capitalization table. Um, as you know, we started with, uh, 80, with a million shares of which management got 15%. And the original owners, in this case, just Fred, uh, gets 80, 850,000 shares. Um, and the management options are obviously reserved for management team members that Fred wants to recruit over the next five years. Uh, th this option pool may actually be awarded to individuals, or it may not, depending on who he needs. And frankly, if he gets to the point where he's exhausted his management option pool and he needs to hire additional people, he'll provide more management options. Um, but this cap table tracks who has how many shares, and this is actually in terms of the number of shares outstanding. Um, there is a calculation here, which we'll go through in a minute, of what the seed investors get in terms of shares in, in return for their $5 million. And as you can see here, uh, that is 34.7% of the business. Um, and that 34.7% of the business dilutes uh, Fred's original 85% down to 55% and dilutes management's equity options down to 9.7%. Let's go through the calculation of those numbers because uh, that is really sort of the last element here to understand uh, how this fundamental uh, venture capital valuation model works. Uh, that the, the numbers are, are shown here. Um, this is just a repeat of the uh, assumption uh, in a table. The size of the round is $5 million for the seed round. Uh, the discount rate is 50% a year. Now that is actually, uh, as students of finance will know, that is actually the same in this case as the internal rate of return because there is a single cash inflow of $5 million to the business or cash outflow from the perspective of the investors uh, offset by a single return of $38 million. That is uh, a 50%. That represents a 50% return, and that's the IRR for that business. Um, the ownership uh, position uh, at 
close might be different from the uh, fully diluted ownership if it were anticipated that there was going to be another round, say in the second or third year, and that would actually have to be anticipated now in order to estimate how much the original investors would get diluted. In this case, there is no such round, and the fully diluted ownership is simply, um, in the case of this model, uh, the, uh, I'm going to take a look at, I'm going to show you what there. It's the exit value uh, of the seed investors, which is 38 million that we calculated earlier, divided by the 109.3 million, which is the exit value before management options. Uh, you can see these numbers up here as well. There's the 109, and there's the 38, and we could have calculated it right here, but for the sake of convenience and some whatever uh, vagaries we have in constructing this model, these numbers have been aggregated down below. Um, and that shows you how that 34.7 is arrived at. The number of new share shares is a formula that is actually given in the case, and it represents, um, it is a function of the percentage ownership of the, of the business. In the case, it's called the investor's share required, which in this case is 34.7%. Uh, and the uh, number of shares outstanding uh, before uh, the issuance of new shares. Uh, that is the formula, and you can check that against your, um, against your case if you want. Uh, that implies a value per share of $9.40, and that is simply a function of the $5, or $5 million value of the round divided by the number of new shares. And then the pre-money value, since there were 1 million shares outstanding, it would be $9.40 times 1 million, which would be $9.4 million, divided by the size of the round, which is $5 million. So the uh, multiple investment is 7.6 times. And um, those are the investment parameters that Fred can now talk to Samantha about. He can tell Samantha that she can get a 50% return, rate of return on her money, uh, 7.6 times her original investment, uh, and that the numbers all work if she'll put up $5 million.